Let's see, I started working on jQuery in 2005. Uh, before then, it, it wasn't, jQuery wasn't even a thing. It was just a collection of tools that I had written. Uh, it was mostly because I had been creating a number of websites and resources around that time. And I kept wanting to have these certain utilities to make my development easier. And part of that was uh, one, just working around sort of like the browser incompatibilities that existed at the time is, you know, just Internet Explorer and Firefox and, uh, and it was just so hard to try and like develop against all these different browsers simultaneously. So that was one issue, but the other issue was just that I felt that the pre-existing development tools, especially the JavaScript development tools, uh, could be better. Um, the, the most popular library at the time was uh, the prototype JavaScript library. And this was one that was bundled with the Ruby on Rails framework. So it was, its popularity was taking off with Rails. And it, that library was actually, I found it to be extremely informative. That was the first time I had seen a JavaScript library written in a nice, clean, object-oriented manner where you had nice, all these nice, nice functional paradigms built into it. Um, and I didn't really realize that JavaScript could be so beautiful and elegant. And once I saw that, it really inspired me to want to build something even better. And I realized that Prototype primarily focused on the JavaScript language, whereas there weren't many tools that focused on the JavaScript language inside the browser, specifically uh, uh, manipulating HTML in the DOM. And so there was this gap here, and there was this big usability uh, 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 chasm. And so that's when I started to build different tools and different libraries. And eventually all these kind of glommed together into a single library, which I ended up calling uh, a jQuery. I was originally going to call it a, a jselect, but that domain was taken or something. And I, so I ended up going with, uh, going with jQuery um, and, and I ended up releasing it uh, January of uh, 2006. At the t I should say, at the time I was in college, uh, I was doing all this while I was in college and I, all these different projects and stuff I was working on were just various side projects and things that I had and jQuery kind of just kind of spun out of these side projects. And I should say none of those side products exist anymore. jQuery is the only one that still exists. So the selector pattern came from, at least where I saw it from, was this library written by this developer in the UK, uh, Simon Willison. And uh, he he started, he created this, this method uh, where it was like get elements by selector, if I remember correctly. And it allowed you to just write a simple CSS selector and find some elements. But it was, it was very, very primitive. You could only do just the most basic of queries and it didn't have the full nice uh, CSS2 and CSS3 and everything. Um, and so one of the things I wanted is one, I wanted a better version of that library, uh, a, more, a more comprehensive version. And additionally, I wanted to make the process of attaching events into the page. So, so when, because when you're building an interactive JavaScript application, you need to listen for when the user is going to be doing certain things. And so doing that process of finding an element and attaching an event to it, uh, I wanted to optimize completely for that. And so that's really what jQuery was initially all about. And it wasn't until later that I started adding in other things like being able to have like uh, animations. And it wasn't even until after I released it that I added in like Ajax and stuff. And that I, That's because other people wanted it. I wasn't even using that personally. Um, so it, it really was, I, I was definitely inspired by all these other developers and, and their libraries. And I just, I just, I, they just weren't quite perfect. Yeah, like I, I wanted to be that, just that, that little bit better to all fit together. And so, so how did it go from sort of you making something and giving it to it sort of taking on a life of its own? Because it didn't take long for it to take on a life of its own. It felt like it took a long time to take on its life of its own. Uh, mostly because, so like, yeah, release it January 2006. And one of the very first design decisions I made, I guess there were a couple that I made right from the start that helped a lot. 
Uh, one was that I provided an explicit plugin architecture so that people could write plugins and add them into the jQuery library and then now they could get the full advantage uh, of this framework. Um, the other decision I made was that on the very first day it was released, I had documentation written. Like I sat down and went through every method and documented it and how it worked and provided little examples. And one thing I think is interesting is that from January 2006 when we released the library to January 2007, jQuery was the only library, only JavaScript library with documentation. Um, all the others were just like read the source code or go through revision control or whatever it was. And it, uh, that always really surprised me. Uh, and I, well, I think it's just, it's, just, it's just a side effect of developers. Like you, yeah. you want to write your code, you don't want to uh, uh, do the boring stuff and writing docs and whatever. And so at least as far as the growth of the library, there are a lot of decisions that I made over the course of, of, of its history that weren't code related. And, I, and, I, and one of the things I always, always try to emphasize is that when you're trying to manage a good project, especially a good open source project, code is only a very small portion of the total equation. Um, you have to spend a lot of time and a lot of effort in making something that people are going to want to learn, that it's easy for them to learn, and that once they do learn it, they don't get frustrated and leave later on. And there's, you have this whole flow that you have to make sure at every step of the way that people are happy and is satisfied and that they're learning. So that usually involves doing things like you have to make sure you have a clear uh, a website, that it's easy to download whatever you're, you're trying to give, that the documentation is very clear, that you have like a, a very uh, nice like getting started guide, uh, but, but then additionally that you have a community built up around this. Now the very first person I brought onto the jQuery team, or at this point it was just me, and then the next person I brought in was actually someone to help manage the community and not another developer per se. And it, although he, he was a developer. And because the reason, the reason why I wanted this was I wanted to make sure that if anyone was having a problem anywhere, that their needs were going to be taken into account and that we would be able to help and fix whatever issue they were hitting. And so we were just ex extremely proactive in fixing browser issues, um, in, in uh, finding you know, just issues in the library in general. And summer of 2006, till the end of 2006, I was actually in uh, Y Combinator, uh, the, the, the startup accelerator run by uh, Paul Graham and, and co. Um, and at that time they were in Boston and I moved to Boston with some friends and we tried to do a startup, um, which ended up failing. Well, we did not get enough funding and it just didn't take off. W once the startup uh, went away, I ended up joining uh, Mozilla. And there I worked as primarily for many years a JavaScript evangelist. So my job was to promote JavaScript and get people you know, to understand what's coming in the specifications, uh, tools and all sorts of stuff like that. But again, I wasn't actually working on jQuery as part of my job. Like it was, it was still very much like I, I would do that and then in my spare time I would just be doing mailing lists and fixing bugs and all those sort of things you have to do. Um, it wasn't until my, about my last year at Mozilla, so like uh, about 2010 to 2011, that uh, they actually said, okay, you can work on jQuery full time. And, that, and that's why I started working on it. And it was great because what I ended up doing during that time was I put a lot of uh, effort into making sure there was infrastructure in place so that if I wasn't working on it, if I wasn't there on a day-to-day -day basis, it could continue to exist. And part of that was setting up a nonprofit and putting, uh, making sure there are enough people working in every aspect of it, such that when I eventually came and joined Khan Academy, I actually stepped down from the jQuery project and everything has been running very well since. And I can just use jQuery now as a happy consumer.